Hey, welcome to Fans of the Forge. We are here with our wrap-up for Forge and Fire Season 6, Episode 23, The Cane Sword. I'm Chris. To my left we have... Sean. We are currently still missing Teresa, yeah. but only for a few more weeks. Oh. She'll be back. All right. It's coming to an end, at least for this summer. Uh, but we'll get right into it. We The Cane Sword Episode... Our contestants were Chad Bolin with part-time experience of six years, Cody Myers uh, full-time for seven years, Doug Butts part-time 25 years, and Ashley Shaw part-time for three years. Now for this one, round one, they like to occasionally take one of the judges' favorite weapons and and have the guys make that. So they went with Doug Markaida, and they had to forge... Not one, but two matching karambits, karambits. Matching karambits, yeah. which I didn't know it were inspired by the tiger's claw. This Makes is kind sense. Of yeah, the style yeah. of it does make sense. So they had to use 1095 steel to make a matching set with all integral construction, drifted finger rings, and a three and a half to four inch blade. So it sounds like a challenge. That's a challenge, all right, because yeah. isn't not only are you making two that have to match. It's integral with drifted fingering. Yeah. For Chad, he made two blades from the 1095 uh, using Big Blue, and it was his first time using a power hammer. And he forges out his blade first instead of doing the rings uh, first, which was a different contestant's method. And his blade design ended up not really looking like a karamid. It yeah. kind of just looked more like a regular old Literally. hunter knife. Like right, small. Uh, Big belly on it. And yeah, it didn't. Wasn't curved the right way. No, definitely wasn't matching. Like one of them was was a kind of a grommet. <laughs> the other one wasn't. For Cody, he planned to forge out his fingerings first, and he was going back and forth for each step, so he can keep them as right. as even as possible. And they didn't really show much for him. And then he quenched with really no issues. No. For Doug, he chops his steel in half first and puts the two pieces in the forge rather than everyone else would put one piece in and then right. drew out that piece. Um, but then he went and he drew his metal out extra long, like super, super long, and had to cut more off. Um, but in the end, he, he quenched with 30 minutes to spare and had no real warpage to speak of. Yep. And then Ashley hammered out a flat billet by hand, it looked like. They showed yeah, him on right. the anvil for a while there. And... Uh, he ended up having these really small billet pieces, like tiny. Like the judges were really concerned that it might not even be enough for the blade itself because it was really small yeah. piece. And I think I when I was watching, I was like, oh well, but they always say like a small piece of steel like can go a long way. Mm-hmm. But then he kind of came back with, yeah, but it you know with an integral construction, like you still need a decent amount of material for the handle, you know, so you can actually use it. Right. Right. So um, so that kind of made sense. Yeah. Um, but even though he did not have that much, he still started to forge his blade out first. He had a real tough time drifting his finger rings and the small, uh, the one finger ring and the small piece of the steels that he had. And then he quenched and went to the grinder to clean them up. For the judging, uh, Ashley's, uh, one of his was more like a crombit than the other, curved versus a straight blade. For Doug, he had really long handles, but they were a good matching set. For Cody, it was very heavy, and the finger alignment was off for one of them. And then for Chad, because his blade style was not a crombit, he ended up getting yeah. boot. So it is what it, it, is, you know. what it is. All right, moving on to round two. So they're tasked with adding uh, flint nap texturing to the handle. Um, clean up the finger rings, and they only got one hour. Right. That's so pretty crazy. You know, so in addition to doing that work, they also had to sharpen their knives. Right. Um, so for Cody, he focuses on refining his blade shape on the grinder and didn't spend any time fixing up his finger holes. Yeah, which, they didn't look so hot. Anyway. Yeah, like, you know, your finger's going in. You should make that <laughs> at least smooth. Yeah. Workable. Uh, for Doug, he plans to cut his um, handles and weld them back together. So he was taking a section out to make them, because they were really long. Yeah. So he kind of shortened them up. Uh, one of his blades starts getting pretty thin, 
Um, and then he flint napped his handle with the angle grinder. And that think, flint napping is kind of a neat texture. I think you see that yeah. a lot. Alex Ruiz, I think, does that on some of his that I've noticed. Yeah. It's a neat it's a neat texturing style for it's like a little bit it's like more than like a hammered texture. It's yeah. like deeper divots and kinda it makes me it reminds me of like volcanic glass. Like sometimes you see that stuff cup yeah. or like um uh, like um old like air like Indian head like oh yeah arrowhead stuff. Like how because that's what it's kind of from, right. you know, chipping rock like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then for Ashley, he worked on making his handle longer by welding extra metal into the blade. Uh, he did have some welding issues and worked on getting the proper texturing. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the testing for the strength test, Ben Abbott's steel plate bash and wood stab. For Ashley, both Kravitz lost their tips, and one of the finger holes was a problem. Uh, for Doug, Ben likes the shorter handles and the ring position, but Ben says they could still be shorter. He had tip damage during the test. Mm -hmm. And for Cody, the blades held well. The tip of the point flattened during the test, but fared much better than in previous karambits. Yep. For the sharpness test, there was a meat slice. So for Ashley, one karambit is comfortable. The other straight karambit didn't work as well. It will cut. For Doug, it had very sharp edges. Despite the missing tips, it will cut. And for Cody, Doug refused the test because the fingering is sharp and would have cut Doug's hand. So Cody had the boot. Yeah. So there's like this protruding little piece that just needed to be knocked out the the dremel tool could have probably easily got yeah i'll say like all you need was just a, a and he i think cody said yeah i it could take in 10 seconds just to knock that out of there mm -hmm. and fine the only reason ben did his test with it is because he was wearing gloves right but doug was gonna go bare hand with it that's and a problem couldn't. yeah so that's a problem so it comes down to ashley versus doug for round three Making the cane sword is a Victorian era high class gentleman weapon plus self defense. It could be sprung by clicking a button, and it's good for stabbing while swinging the sheath to smash an <laughs> opponent. Why not? It's a yeah. heavy wooden sheath. They had to have a 28 to 30 inch blade, a cane pommel or handle, and they must have a sheath and a mechanical locking mechanism, and they had four days to complete. So. I wouldn't want to have to make a mechanical locking mechanism for something like that. That definitely is no. difficult. I, you know. I wouldn't know where to start. I know. I mean, I guess you do just research on yeah. cane swords that were made and see how they worked. And yeah. yeah. So for Ashley, day one, he started by working on the blade shape. Uh, day two, he touched up. He did touch up work on the blade and then quenched. And he came out of the quench with a warp, and he decides he can try one more quench, and he ends up continuing on with his blade from there. And then he makes a frame construction for his sheath. So he kind of made like a, a rectangle out of pieces of wood first and then yeah. put pieces on the outside. And, uh, and he also textured the sheath to kind of have a nice look to it. Right. For Doug, he... Did a ceremonial lighting of a fireball yeah. to start Boy, his build. Did he. That was a hell of a fireball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder if the camera guys are like shocked or not yeah. expecting that. Um, he uses uh, his only piece of 5160 that he has left for the blade. And then he has some Damascus uh, that he has that he uses for the handle and the pommel. They skipped day two. Uh, but they did say that he had, he had a successful quench on day two. And so on day three, he starts working on his locking mechanism. And then on day four, he works on putting on his Damascus pommel and then breaks his tap for the threads. Um, and he has to end up getting some rosewood to replace it because he couldn't use that yeah. Damascus right then. I mean, maybe eventually he could salvage it, but not in time for this. No. So they go in for testing. And it was at this moment... That I happened to pause for a second to, to look at something, and I noticed there's only like two minutes left to the episode. <laughs> hey, what do you know? I'm like, huh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> interesting. This is going to be over soon, I guess. So they go in for their keel test. It's the ballistics dummy chop. Relatively straightforward test, right? Normal test. Doug had a very sharp edge, thrusts and cuts nicely. The curved part of the handle was good for wielding the, the, the blade. Overall, it was just pretty badass. And then for Ashley's, he got like one or two stabs in, and then Doug swung the thing, 
and it hit the ballistic dummy in the neck and the freaking thing broke. The sword yeah. broke, catastrophic failure on the ballistic dummy. Like, I don't know if I've seen a catastrophic failure that bad on a on the ballistic dummy before. Usually it's a little bit harder of a strength test. I mean, was, it, was he going at it flat? Because how? Because it, it like broke like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like slapping the face with it. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I yeah. didn't catch that part, but it it definitely well, either way it broke in half, and they said likely it was not heat treated properly, and the grinds were uneven. So yeah. at that spot, it was really thin and it caused it to break. Yep. So because of catastrophic failure, Doug wins, and that's the episode. Yeah. It was, yeah, it, was it was a cool good. weapon, though. I liked it. It was a really cool yeah. weapon. Yeah, I would I would definitely like to play around with one of those sometime. But uh, yeah, congratulations to Doug. Congratulations to everybody on this episode for competing. Um, the Karambit challenge was not easy. No. So we, we keep saying <laughs> it. They keep making these challenges harder. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to really make something that's going to work the way they intend it to work. So... Congrats on all of them for going through that challenge, yeah. and uh, that's it. That's it. That's the episode. Right. So thanks, everybody, for watching this quick wrap-up for Forge and Fire Season 6, Episode 23, The Cane Sword. Remember to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or subscribe to the YouTube channel, or download the audio podcast if you don't want awesome. any of that other yep. stuff. all that stuff. So that's what we have going on. That's the episode. Thank you for watching. See you. And uh, in case anyone gets confused, we're fans of the Forge. Yeah.